Welcome to our workshop. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're talking about what I think are the 10 most useful hand tools when it comes to woodworking and building stuff in general. Let's jump right into it. Thank you so much for joining me. Let's get started. All right, so we're starting off simple. A tool that's gonna be useful basically no matter what you do, and that is gonna be a knife. Now this particular knife is incredibly useful because it has a bunch of really cool features. One of my favorite features is that it has this pry bar thing in the back here. And you won't believe how useful having this on you at all times can be. You can use it to open paint cans, you can use it to screw on flathead screws, and what I very often use it for is to twist open this locking mechanism on my track saw guides, which is operated by just big flat head screws and it cam locks in place. So it's super handy to not have to go grab a separate tool when I have my knife on me at all times. This particular knife is an Olfa knife. It has this twist lock mechanism where it twists and opens up and then you can lock it in place so it's really securely locked in so you know it's not gonna slide on you and potentially cut you. It also has these standard breakaway blades that you can just break away and then replace once they're out. That way you don't need to sharpen the blade. So yeah, first tool, this utility knife with this little pry bar thingy. Tool number two is gonna be this little machinist square. Now this little guy is super useful just because of its sheer size, so you can have it with you at all times. It's a really convenient tool to have when you need to transfer some markings from top of a board to the side or to the other side. And it's much easier to use one of these little ones than to use one of these big ones, also because this one you can carry in your pocket. I've also found this super useful when you need to align hinges to a door, so you can use this side and butt the hinge up against it so you know it's totally square against the side of the door. Now this next one is kind of obvious, but number three is my tape measure. Now, there's a couple of reasons why I like this particular one. The first reason is that it's only metric. That means that I can make a mark on both the top and bottom side. And on this particular one, also on the back. Now, the same thing would apply with only having inches on your tape measure. That way you don't have to look at the millimeter side if you don't care about it. But I feel like you should care about it because metric is so much better. Also, for me at least, I find it much more convenient to be able to hook the tape measure at the end of the thing you're measuring from than having to line up one of these things. I know that that is kind of up to a personal preference, but especially on longer objects, I find this much more convenient. And it retracts, so you don't have to like fold it. Number four, one of these clicky lead pencils. Now, yes, these also depend a little bit on the type of work that I do, but especially for me, where I usually do finer detailed work, it's super convenient to have a pencil that always leaves the same thickness of a line, no matter how much you use it, compared to a regular pencil that you need to sharpen and the line gets thicker and thicker over the time you use it. Now, I find using one of these gives me a more consistent and precise result, just because it's easier to deal with a line that stays the same thickness than one that varies in size over time. Also, this thin line is much easier to erase after the fact. Also, I think worth mentioning is that these tools aren't necessarily arranged in order of most to least useful or anything like that. But a thing worth mentioning is that the four tools that we've talked about so far are the only four tools that I used to carry on me at all times. Now, I don't carry tools on me anymore at all because I have my own workshop now and all my tools are in the drawers. But when I used to, when I used to do jobs out at customers' places or when I used to do carpentry in a place where I didn't have my own tool set up. The four tools that I used to carry with me at all times were the knife, the tape measure, the machinist square, and the clicky pen, and all the other tools would live in a tool cart that I used to carry around with me. Moving on to number five. All right, tool number five is gonna be this combination square. Now these things are really useful. It does a lot of the same stuff as my little machinist square, as in it's a square, but this thing can do a whole bunch of other things as well. So yeah, obviously it's a square, but the ruler here can be moved side to side so that you can actually set it to a dimension you want on the scale here. And then that dimension is this surface to the end here. So you can use this thing to mark a parallel line to the edge of your board, or you can mark a bunch of locations that are exactly the same dimension away from the edge of your board. It also has this angle here, which if you set it against a board will create a 45 degree angle. And if you want, you can also take this whole thing away and then just use this part as a regular metal ruler that you can use to mark up stuff on a flat surface. And by pulling this thing all the way to the end here and tightening it, you can check if something is at 90 degree to the surface that this thing sits on. Pretty useful. Okay, so talking about tools that I would have with me at all times. Now this tool I would always have with me as long as I bring a drill 
this thing comes. And what is it? It's a countersinking drill bit. That means that you can drill a hole and countersink the hole all in the same operation, which saves you so much time. I literally use this for every single hole I drill if the screw is gonna be countersunk. And you can see right here, one of them lives on my drill basically all the time. These things come in different sizes and you can adjust the length. So if you've got it set up properly, you can just drill the holes and then drive in the screws. I used it a ton where I built this work table and there's so many screws in here and it all went together super quickly. These particular ones are by a German company called Fish. I really like the build quality of the countersinking thing. And a neat feature is that they have this hex back, which means that I can also put them into my <laughs> impact driver if I want to do that. Now, talking about drill bits, I decided to combine two different types of drill bits into one here, just because I wanted to talk about these drill bits really quick, which are made by the same company, Fish. These are just really nicely ground and make super clean holes. They last a really long time, and they also have this shank thingy. And if you're interested in any of these tools, I'll make sure to leave a link to all the tools I talked about right below that like button. Next on the list, is this here small shoulder plane. Now this particular one is a combination plane between a shoulder plane and a chisel plane where I can take the front part here off. Here's actually a good example of the use of that knife because to take it off, it has this flat head screw here that I can do with the use of this guy. So now I can get all the way inside the corners and if I put this thing back on, I use this thing all the time to make nice sharp chamfers on things like the edge of my workbench or furniture when I don't really wanna break out the router and put in a router bit and deal with all that hassle. This thing running across the edge a couple of times leaves a super nice and sharp chamfer. This particular one is an Axminster shoulder plane. I don't really use it for what it's intended for, but the small size, I really, really like. It fits well in my hands. All right, next one. Okay, so let's talk about the one thing on this list that isn't necessarily a tool, but more of a consumable. And that is CA glue. CA glue is crazy useful, especially if you combine it with the activation spray that it comes with, which basically just speeds up the hardening time of the glue. Now you can get these super glues in different viscosities. Some of them are thicker and some of them are thinner. You can also get them in different times that you have until they set up. This one is a Tech 7 brand, but CA glue can save you so much time and it can also get you out of a lot of trouble. CA glue can work as a clamp if you want to hold two objects together that have kind of a weird shape that isn't really easy to clamp together. Apply a little bit of CA glue and then some wood glue and then the CA glue will hold everything together while the wood glue hardens. A good example of this is when I built my chair, I used CA glue to put together the entire frame and then I used screws to hold everything together properly. So yeah, CA glue. Talking about clamping stuff together, let's talk about the clamp that I use the most. Wow, this guy. I love this style of clamp. It's a uh, quick grip, so it advances as you do this. You can also speed up that process and then do the rest by hand. These aren't necessarily the hardest clamping clamps, but they're definitely the most convenient, especially if you're holding something and you're trying to clamp with one hand. This is much easier than those twisty clamps that you end up having to hold with one hand and then twist with the other one. Anything you learn when you start making stuff is that you can basically never have enough clamps. So if any tool company out there wants to sponsor me with some new clamps maybe, I'd be more than happy to accept those. So the last tool on the list is this little guy. Hold on. There we go. It's this little guy. It's a Torx bit. Now good quality drill bit can save you for so much time and trouble just because it won't strip the heads of the screws. And switching to the right type of screw will save you even more time. Now I only use Torx screws and I realize that I'm lucky because I live in a part of the world where Torx screws are the most common ones and other parts of the world still use other types of screws like Phillips or those weird square ones. <laughs> but boy, let me tell you, Torx bits and screws are amazing. I used this thing on an impact driver and I can't remember the last time I actually stripped the screw. Now, I really like these long bits because they give me a little bit more space away from the hand. They're one piece, so you don't need an extension or anything like that. These things will last me about six months before I have to change one single bit. And the nice thing is that I basically only ever need three different types of bits. This T20 that I use for basically 80% of my work, and then I have a T25 that I use for the bigger screws and a T10 that I use for the really small screws. So if you're thinking about converting to Torx, do it.
It's awesome. <laughs> All right, so that was 10 of what I think are the most useful hand tools that I use basically every day. I'm curious to know, do you agree with my list or do you feel like there's an essential tool that I forgot to talk about? Or is there a tool that you know of that does the job that one of these tools does just better? I'm curious to hear your thoughts, so please let me know in the comments down below. Also, do you know what I really like in addition to these 10 hand tools? My new t-shirt. So I recently launched a new merchandise store where I have t-shirts and hoodies and other cool stuff. And you can check out all that in the link right below that like button. I'm curious to know, do you like videos like this where I just talk about tools or other things and not necessarily build anything? Maybe we can do a similar one with power tools. Let me know in the comments down below. As for now, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.